Soon it was time to go to sleep for I had to attend the midnight service, and already I was so tired that I thought that possibly in the morning I could oversleep. In the afternoon of the next day the Lama Miniodon up came into my room while I was studying an old book. Come in with me, Lobsang, he said, I have just returned from a talk with the inmost one and now we have to discuss problems which are puzzling you. He turned and led the way into his own room. Sitting in front of him I thought of all the things which were on my mind. Sir, I said, why are people who marry so unfriendly to each other? I looked at the aura of those to Regiab last night, and it seemed to me that they really hated each other. If they hated each other why did they marry? The Lama looked really sad for a few moments, and then he said, People forget, Lobsang, that they come down to this earth in order to learn lessons. Before a person is born, while a person is still on the other side of life, arrangements are going ahead deciding what sort, what type, of marriage partner will be chosen. You should understand that a lot of people get married in what one might term the heat of passion. When passion spends itself, then the newness, the strangeness, wears off and familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity breeds contempt. I thought about it and thought about it. Why, then, did people get married? Obviously people got married in order that the race might continue. But why could not people get together the same as animals did? I raised my head and asked that question of my guide. He looked at me and said, Why, Lobsang? You surprise me, you should know as well as anyone that the so-called animals often mate for life. Many animals mate for life, many birds mate for life, certainly the more evolved ones do. If people got together, as you say, just for the purpose of increasing the race, then the resulting children would be almost soulless people, the same in fact as those creatures who are born by what is known as artificial insemination. There must be love and intercourse, there must be love between the parents if the best type of child is to be born, otherwise it is much the same as just a factory made article. This business of husband and wife really puzzled me. I thought of my own parents, my mother had been a domineering woman, and my father had been really harsh to us, his children. I could not summon up much filial affection when I thought of either my mother or my father. I said to my guide, but why do people get married in the heat of passion? Why do they not get married as a business proposition? Lobsang, said my guide that is often the way of the Chinese and of the Japanese too. Their marriages are often arranged, and I must admit that Chinese and Japanese marriages are far far more successful than marriages in the Western world. The Chinese themselves liken it to a kettle. They do not marry in passion because they say it is like a kettle boiling and cooling off. They marry coolly and allow the mythical kettle to come up to the boil and in that way it stays hot longer. He looked at me to see if I was following, to see if the matter was clear to me. But I cannot see, sir, why people are so unhappy together. Lobsang, people come to earth, as to a classroom, they come to learn things, and if the average husband and wife were ideally happy together then they would not learn, for there would be nothing to learn. They come to this earth to be together and to get on together, that is part of the lesson, they have to learn to give and to take. People have rough edges, edges or idiosyncrasies which jar and grate on the other partner. The grating partner must learn to subdue and perhaps end the annoying trait, while the partner who is annoyed must learn tolerance and forbearance. Almost any couple could live together successfully provided they learn this matter of give and take. Sir, I said, how would husband and wife be advised to live together? Husband and wife, Lobsang, should wait for a favorable moment, and should then kindly, courteously, and calmly say what is causing them distress. If a husband and a wife would discuss things together, 
then they would be more happy in their marriage. I thought about this, and I wondered how my father and my mother would get on if they tried to discuss anything together. To me they seemed to be fire and water, with each one being as antipathetic to the other. My guide obviously knew what I was thinking for he continued, there must be some give and take, because if these people are going to learn anything at all, then they should be sufficiently aware to know that there is something wrong with them. But how is it, I asked, that one person falls in love with another, or feels attracted to another? If they are attracted to each other at one stage why do they so soon cool off? Lob sang, you will well know that if one sees the aura one can tell about another person. The average person does not see the aura, but instead many people have a feeling, they can say that they like this person, or that they dislike that person. Most times they cannot say why they like or dislike but they will agree that one person pleases them and another person displeases them. Well, sir, I exclaimed, how can they suddenly like a person and then suddenly dislike a person? When people are at a certain stage, when they feel that they are in love, their vibrations are increased, and it may well be that when these two people, some man and some woman, have heightened vibrations, they would be compatible. Unfortunately they do not always let it remain heightened. The wife will become dowdy, perhaps she will refuse the husband what is undeniably his right. The husband will then go out after some other woman, and gradually they will drift apart. Gradually their etheric vibrations will alter so that they are no longer compatible, so that they are completely antipathetic. Yes I could see that, and it really did explain much. But now I return to the attack. Sir, I am most puzzled to know why a baby should live for perhaps a month and then die. What chance does that baby have of learning or paying back karma? It seems just a waste to everyone so far as I can see. The Lama Miniadon up smiled slightly at my vehemence. No, Lob sang, nothing is wasted. You are being confused in your mind. You are assuming that a person lives for one life only. Let us take an example. He looked at me and then looked out of the window for a moment. I could see that he was thinking of those people of the Ray Gab, thinking perhaps of their baby. I want you to imagine that you are accompanying a person who is getting through a series of lives, said my guide. The person has done rather badly in one life and in later years that person decides that he cannot go on any longer, he decides that conditions are just too bad for him, so he puts an end to his life, he commits suicide. The person therefore died before he should have died. Every person is destined to live for a certain number of years, days and hours. It is all arranged before they come down to this earth. If a person terminates his own life perhaps twelve months before he would normally have died, then he has to come back and serve the additional twelve months. I looked at him and visualized some of the remarkable possibilities which could come from that. My guide continued, a person ends his life. He remains in the astral world until an opportunity occurs whereby he can come down to earth again under appropriate conditions and live out the time he has to serve on earth. This man with twelve months, well, he may come down and be a sickly baby, and he will die while he is still a baby. In losing that baby the parents also will have gained something. They will have lost a baby but they will have gained experience. They will have paid back a little of what they had to pay back. We will agree that while people are on earth their outlook, their perceptions, their values, everything, are distorted. This, I repeat, is the world of illusion, the world of false values, and when people return to the greater world of the over-self then they can see that the hard, senseless lessons and experiences undergone during this sojourn on earth were not so senseless after all. I looked about me and thought of all the prophecies about me, prophecies of hardship, prophecies of torture, 
prophecies of sojourns in far and strange lands. I remarked, then a person who makes a prophecy is merely getting in touch with the source of information, if everything is arranged before one comes down to earth, then it is possible under certain conditions to tap the knowledge? Yes, that is perfectly correct, said my guide, but do not think that everything is laid out as inevitable. The basic lines are there. We are given certain problems, certain lines to follow, and then we are left to do the best we can. One person can make good and another person can fail. Look at it in this way, supposing two men are told that they have to go from here to Kalimpong in India. They do not have to follow the same path, but they have to arrive at the same destination if they can. One man will take one route and another man will take another route, depending upon the route which they take so will their experiences and adventures be affected. That is like life. Our destination is known but how we get to that destination remains within our own hands. As we were talking a messenger appeared, and my guide, with a short word of explanation to me, followed the messenger down the corridor. I wandered again to the window, and rested my elbows on the ledge, supporting my face in my hands. I thought of all that I had been told, thought of all the experiences that I had had, and my whole being welled with love for that great man, the Lama Minya donned up, my guide, who had shown me more love than my parents had ever shown me. I decided that no matter what the future would bring, I would always act and behave as if my guide were by my side supervising my actions. Down in the fields below monk musicians were practicing their music.